Restoring first principles in our government, that is the topic of tonight's byline. If I told you the government was seizing private property, like a home, without compensating the people they were taking it from, most Canadians would think that was wrong. Government is supposed to exist to protect the people, not oppress them. But the federal government is confiscating private property and refusing to pay people for the things they seize. Yes, I'm talking about rifles again, but this really is about more than firearms. The decision on what can be banned and seized has been handed over to police. They decide what is allowed and what isn't, and they enforce the laws. Would we allow this when it comes to traffic violations? Let the police decide what they could and couldn't charge people with? No. Would we allow the police to decide which substances are considered narcotics and which ones Canadians are legally allowed to consume? No. And if if anyone actually tried that, you can bet the usual suspects in the media would be up in arms over this. Harper government takes hard line against soft drugs. That's what the headlines would scream. Well, where is the outrage over the government allowing police to decide which guns to ban and then seize them? It doesn't exist. Instead, they are chasing a story about a foreign lesbian couple who got married in Canada and are now complaining they can't get divorced because they don't live here. Foreigners complaining about our divorce laws or government bureaucrats deciding what can and can't be confiscated. Which of these is the more important issue? Which one will have a greater impact on Canadians, on Canada, on how we govern ourselves? It's the gun seizure story, but while the consensus media chases the lesbian divorce, the way we govern ourselves is being eroded. Where in our legal or constitutional history is there any recognition of our elected officials handing over this much power to nameless, faceless bureaucrats? You know, if a politician did this, uh, they decided they were going to ban certain firearms, and I disagreed with that, I could vote against them. And enough, enough, if enough of us disliked what this politician was doing, they'd be out of a job. Can we do that with bureaucrats, though? No, we can't. And the politicians we have elected, people like Vic Taves, they're protecting the bureaucrats. I have to ask, is this what the men on Juno Beach fought and died for? The ability of the permanent bureaucracy to run our lives. Across the country, we have similar situations where unelected civil servants have been given extraordinary powers. This is the problem with the Alberta Land Use Act that gives civil servants extraordinary powers over private property. It powers to a degree that it just shouldn't happen. They shouldn't have these. In Ontario, we've got Bob Mackey and the landowners groups in Niagara fighting the Niagara Escarpment Commission over how he can use his own land. It's not zoning bylaws that he's in violation of. It's rules set forward by the unelected, unaccountable Niagara Escarpment Commission. And arm's length group of the Ontario government. Let me warn you, any time you hear arm's length, beware. It means that the group has power over you and the politicians that we elect, they will be afraid to touch them even when that group, that body, starts abusing its powers. Governments refusing to rein in these bodies, well, or abusing power themselves, these are some of the reasons that in the United States, Congressman Ron Paul is gaining traction. People are fed up. Paul is on a campaign to have Americans recognize, support, and live by their constitution. I say we need the same here in Canada. We need to get back to first principles of government, and we need to strip back the power of unelected bureaucrats. And that's the byline. Joining us now for a further discussion on what's happening in terms of firearms is Ed Burlew. He is a lawyer from St. Catharines, Ontario, and an expert in firearms law. Mr. Burlew, thanks for coming in and joining us again today. Um, I'm getting emails by the day saying, you don't know the half of it. Uh, these confiscations are going on more and more. What are you hearing? Because I know you represent a lot of people on these issues. Is the RCMP stepping up ahead of the gun registry being um, killed off? Yes, they, indeed they are. By the way, I'm from Thornhill, not St. Catharines. Ah, uh, sorry for that. That's okay. <laughs> they are so, stepping things up quite considerably. It seems to be a reaction of the police in general, as well with the RCMP, with the introduction of C-19, which will eliminate the long gun registry. So what are they doing? Are, are they just reclassifying? Are, are there raids on homes? Because... 
When the gun registry was first proposed and when the law was being debated, opponents said this will lead to confiscation of weapons. And supporters said, don't be ridiculous, you're going over the top. Now the gun registry is being used to confiscate weapons that were retroactively, retroactively reclassified as banned. Uh, are they using the registry to, to, to say, this person has some, let's do raids and see what they've got? Well, they're using the registry to check, to, to check out to see who has what and make sure they have that in their possession if it's legally registered. And they're also going back to the registry under the criminal code that was disbanded in 1998 to also check to see if you still have that gun if, you're, if you haven't re-registered it. And those were uh, restricted and prohibited firearms back then. And they are making raids if you don't give the gun up or say, I don't have them, and they think you have them. And they are doing that. They're using hard takedowns and guns and gangs and SWAT teams. And I represent many of those people. You've got uh, one gentleman, Northern Ontario, who could be facing three years in jail. Um, tell us about his story, because uh, the way you tell it sounds like somebody feeling they made an honest mistake. And uh, the way the police tell it sounds like somebody could be facing hard time. Well, that's very correct. What happened was there's a, uh, a gentleman uh, in North Bay, uh, myself and Mr. Murray of Arnprior, Ontario, we're representing him. He's been charged with having unregistered prohibited firearm, one, which is a 22 rim fire semi-automatic uh, with ammunition available. Because after all, who doesn't have a box of 22 rim fires if you have a 22 rifle? Uh, he had it safely stored at his home. The police suspected uh, him of having done something else. They came into his house and they found the gun. He had uh, acquired the gun and did, it was not registered because he thought it was under the amnesty. And it didn't need to be. He thought it was an ordinary non-restricted firearm. I in fact, this gun is not listed on the order in council that lists re uh, prohibited firearms. But the gun was sent for analysis, and it came back that the, the RCMP lab uh, had determined that it was a prohib, and this was a total shock to this man. And so, now, so it's gone from him thinking it's under an amnesty, uh, or that it was just a regular 22 to prohibited, and that means if he's guilty, it's a bigger sentence. Well, it's it's huge. It's three years minimum mandatory in jail. The Crown elected to go indictable. Presently, the trial is ongoing in Thunder Bay in Superior Court. The issue of compensation um, for, pe unlike this, John Wynn, but for people that are getting these revocation notices, to me, it seems an affront to how we govern ourselves that we would simply say, look, the government can take your property. They don't owe you a penny. And if you don't give it to them, you're going to face jail time. Uh, I, am I just off my rocker there, or, or is it the police and the government that are missing something? Well, I think that the police and the government are missing the point. Because in other jurisdictions, say in England and in Australia, where there were very dire uh, uh, confiscations of firearms, money was paid for those confiscations. Uh, in England, uh, when pistols were confiscate many years ago, uh, everybody got an average of uh, $400 Canadian. And in England and in uh, Australia, they pan out over $2 billion. But, I mean, even in Canada, though, if the government's going to take my house to put in a roadway, they pay me for it. You're right. And there's a procedure for that. But in the gun uh, area, they don't have a procedure. They just issue a uh, letter, a ruling, and there you are. Uh, it's the most unfair. Unfair and disturbing, given the, the way that we like to view our country. As I said uh, earlier, I don't think this is what the men that fought at Juneau Beach died for. Ed Burlew, thanks so much for coming in today, helping us sort through it.